had issue right. with the loophole around unemployment, basically giving money to people to stay at home. Explain that for us, Senator. Okay, so if you make $15 an hour uh, for a 40-hour week, that's $600 a week. My goal was to make sure that in the unemployment part of the package, we made you whole, that uh, you were laid off, no fault to your own, you'd get $600 a week. What we did in the package is we plussed up unemployment benefits, so you'll get $926 a week if you live in South Carolina. We increased your pay by 50%. That's going to make it harder to get people back into the workforce. It's going to incentivize people not to go back into the workforce, and it's going to make it harder for people to uh, hire new employees. If you're Amazon and Walmart, the hourly wage not to work in South Carolina is $23.14. I'm all for helping people. How did this happen? They tell us at the state level it would take six to eight months to create a computer program to pay you the difference between the state unemployment benefit and your actual wage. So what do we do? We just put $600 on top of it. So we took a $1,500, a $15 an hour employee who was making $600 working, we're going to pay him $926 in South Carolina not to work. We need to fix that. How are you going to fix it? Get some state to figure software that can pay you the difference between the maximum benefit per week of $326 and $600. They tell me that can't be done. We sent two men to the moon. Now, Steven Mnuchin, this is huh. not his fault. We have a $600 federal benefit on top of the state benefit. We have a situation where people getting a 100% pay raise not to work. We have got to fix that. Some smart person needs to develop software that can pay your actual wages, not increase your wages in unemployment. The unemployment insurance, and that will go through the states. Um, I know the states are a bit overwhelmed in their unemployment insurance, but they're going to work as hard as they have. And I know Lindsay and others have commented on this. The reason why we sent one number is we had to create a simple system, and we didn't think it would be fair to send certain states $400 and other states $800. So on a bipartisan basis at the, the banking committee, they pick $600 across the board. So, so when you said yesterday, you know, these numbers don't matter in, in response to the numbers on jobless claims up to 3.3 million, what you were saying was that you think that this is just a spike, it's temporary, and things will normalize by year end. Is that what you now, what meant it, when you said what, these numbers? What, yeah. What, what I should have said is these, these numbers matter because it indicates people are losing their jobs. And... You know, now we have government programs. We'll either get those people back to work or we'll get those people money. But whether the number is higher or lower in the short term, economic statistics at the moment are not relevant. We're in an unprecedented situation where the government shut down major parts of the economy. So whether it's unemployment claims or other numbers, this doesn't reflect the normal economy. This reflects government action. And that's why, you know, mm -hmm. this historic $2 trillion package, plus, as you said, another $4 trillion we can use with the Fed, that's $6 trillion to help save American workers and American business. And, and the president is fully committed that we're going to do everything in our power to protect workers and business. This is a time where we need everybody to come together. And it's not a time yeah. to criticize parts of the deal that we may not have liked. Understood. At the time that everybody should say, this is the time that we want to see the government and the states all come together and execute on the largest financial package in the history of time that the president now has uh, the support of Congress and hopefully will sign today to fight this war. And this is a war, and we will win this war, and we yes. will protect American economy. I think we've done absolutely the worst thing we could do to stabilize the economy. We have incentivized people not to go to back to work. That is just, I just can't imagine the effect in South Carolina and other places when you realize you're getting $24 an hour on unemployment. So every employer in the state has to compete against a $24 an hour minimum, minimum wage now, I guess, and isn't the smart thing to make people whole up to about $50,000 and 
aggressively contain the disease and get the economy open as soon as we can. That's the smart thing. Uh, four Republican senators uh, have indicated that the extra $600 for unemployment insurance may encourage workers to leave their jobs, even though you can only collect unemployment if you're fired. I'm curious what you think of that concern. Well, I, I know the issue very well. We talked about it just a little while ago. I'll let Steve, I'm going to let you maybe discuss that. Sure. Now, the President, I spoke to several of those senators today, but let me just explain the issue, which is we wanted to have enhanced unemployment insurance. Most of these state systems have technology that's 30 years old or older. So if we had the ability to customize this with much more specifics, we would have. This was the only way we could assure that the states could get money out quickly in a fair way. So we used $600 across the board. And I, I don't think it will create incentives. Most Americans, what they want, they want to keep their jobs. And I said for 50 percent of these, these businesses, they will have the businesses keep those jobs. So this was in a, our number one issue was how do we make sure that American workers who needed to keep getting paid, this is no fault of their own, that businesses have been shut down. The president and vice president wanted to make sure those hardworking Americans got money. And this was the most efficient way of doing it. Senators that you spoke with, are they in agreement now? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to comment on the specifics of, of, of where they are, but uh, I would say, you know, our expectation is this bill passes tonight and gets to the House tomorrow and they pass it. We need to get this money into the American economy and American workers. That's the, Im the importance of this. I mean, the, one, the one good thing when you think about that, people could get actually more money. Can you please say a few words? Mr. President, thank you very much for your leadership and for the Vice President's leadership. You made it very clear to us last week we should think big, that this was a war on the virus and that we should have the resources to protect American workers and American business. And uh, I'd like to thank the Senate. It was a great honor, Mitch, to work with you and everyone on a bipartisan basis to get this done. This is going to be a great thing for the American workers. And Kevin McCarthy, thank you for all the work in the House did to pass this quickly. So at Treasury, as I've said, we are committed to move forward quickly, and we're going to get money in people's pockets quickly. Thank you, Mr. President. Great job, Steve. That's going to make it harder to get people back into the workforce. It's going to incentivize people not to go back into the workforce. That's going to make it harder to get people back into the workforce. It's going to incentivize people not to go back into the workforce. It's going to incentivize people not to go back into the workforce. It's going to incentivize people not to go back into the workforce. It's going to incentivize people not to go back into the workforce. It's going to incentivize people not to go back into the workforce.